Good morning, everybody. It's February 21st, 2018, and I believe... Well, my name, uh, well, I don't even know. I think we're going to put this episode up on uh, YouTube. I don't know. On oh, no. Yeah, Corrupted. So this is episode number uh, 65 of Morning Madness, a show that is exclusively uploaded to my patron for all my patrons on patreon.com slash Joe Cronin Show. So if you guys want to hear all previous 64 episodes and then every other episode every day after this, which is Monday through Friday usually, sometimes we take little breaks here or there, but almost Monday through Friday, $5 a month, patrons, patreon.com slash Joe Cronin Show, become a patron, and hear all my commentary on all this stuff. I got sent something uh, from Famous B earlier, the uh, Lucha Underground Famous B. He sent me this, uh, asking me what I thought about it. And um, turns out it's uh, pretty hot news right now. Didn't know it happened until Famous B sent it to me, so I appreciate that he did send it to me. Um, it's it's apparently uh, Laura Ingram uh, crapping on LeBron James, I guess, because LeBron James and a couple other people in a car, uh, Kevin Durant actually is in the car, I didn't realize it was Kevin Durant, um, were giving their comments about, you know, Donald Trump. I mean, it was a little eye-rolling. They're in the car. They're like, you know, I don't think he's doing a good job, and uh, he's racist comments and stuff like that. I'm not. I'm still not sure about Trump's like racist comments that they're talking about. I don't know if if I would necessarily give a damn what LeBron James thinks too much or what they think. Um, but but yet I do. You know, I mean, I don't think they're very smart on the subject, but but at the same time they are. So, um, but I, I wouldn't discredit. What I will say is I probably wouldn't discredit anyone's opinion on anybody because if you have an opinion, it's very telling. Like. I'm somebody who normally wants everybody to like me or I want to at least be given an honest chance with everybody. So, I mean, if I heard LeBron James comments, uh, James comments about me that way, I would be very disturbed and say, man, I want to do a better job for you to make... If I do a better job for you, will you consider, you know, how you feel about me? You know what I mean? So I would really want to work hard to change things. So I'm happy to hear everyone's opinion, you know. Um, but apparently, Laura Ingram was not able to hear or happy to hear LeBron James opinion nor Kevin Durant's opinion on a video of them in a car on a t on some kind of show that they do where they drive around in a car and they talk about stuff coincidentally a commercial for that show came up before this Fox News clip on YouTube <laughs> so that was kind of funny so let's listen to the clip here it comes it's discussion time here on the Joe Cronin uh, Morning Madness Corrupted Podcast and there's no wrong or right I suppose answer here um, but here we go all right, we're going to create a new banner. This is a jump doc alert. Ding, 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 ding. NBA jump jump doc alert. So I don't know if she was like it was like a jerk, joke, <laughs> uh, like dumb jock alert, but jock dumb like ha. Huh? I don't, I don't know what the fuck are they Fox News superstar LeBron James is talking politics again, and this time it's R rated. Oh. Here's his barely it's intelligible, not to mention ungrammatical take on President Trump. And a new ESPN podcast. The number one... First of all, ESPN sucks. ...job in America, the point of person, is someone who doesn't understand the people. And really don't give a f*** about the people. Well, I think he, I, 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 he's talking about Trump, obviously. I think Trump understands some of the people, <laughs> but not all of the people. No doubt about it. But wait, there's more gripping insight. ESPN host Kerry Champion asked James and fellow NBA star Kevin Durant about what she described as Trump's racist comments. I feel like our team as a, as a country is not ran by a great coach. It's not even a surprise when he says something. It's not even a surprise. It's like laughable. It's like, it's that's laughable, bad. It's laughable, it's laughable and it's but scary. It, but it's also scary right, because right. I shouldn't be numb to your racist right, comments. Right, right. I shouldn't yeah. be numb to your behavior. I'm numb to this commentary like must they run their mouths like that unfortunately a lot of kids <laughs> so bizarre I don't know I I'm not going either way because you guys know that I'm not a liberal I'm not a Republican must they run their mouths like that <laughs> what go back a second it's commentary be numb to your racist right comments. right I shouldn't yeah. be numb to your behavior I'm numb to this commentary like must they run their mouths like that? I'm 
What a weird comment to make. Must they run their mouths like that? Must they run their mouths like that? Like, what does that mean? First of all, I don't necessarily even agree with LeBron in this trio in this car. Um, I don't know what they're talking about. I don't know what racist comments they're talking about. I don't think that Trump has said anything that's absolutely a racist comment. I mean, the closest thing was, I think, the Pocahontas thing. But I don't think that was... I don't give a shit about that, to be honest. So, like, I'm sorry. Does Trump say a lot of things that are kind of like, what the hell, I can't believe he said that? Yes. Um, am I a little bit nervous about Trump? Yes. Do I think he's doing a good job in many ways? Yes. Do I think he's doing a bad job in other ways? Yes. Am I also terrified of, of things he's doing? Yes. So, I mean, when you ask me, I, I say he's doing a great job with some things and he's terrifying me in other ways. So, I can honestly say that Laura Ingram probably loves Trump and LeBron and them are scared of Trump and saying he's doing all these things. I feel both ways. <laughs> I'm somebody that feels both ways. But to deny or sort of disavow or undermine or whatever LeBron's opinion and their feelings about Trump and even so much that last line really sits with me though when she says these uh, must they run their mouths like this and then she made fun of their grammar like 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 you know I don't know just bizarre I mean typical Fox News I guess typical ESPN too I mean it was just so typical of both so when people ask me how I feel about this I, I feel that well there's there's ESPN playing up to the we hate Trump stuff you know with with LeBron and they're saying he's racist and we don't really I don't get what did he say that's racist what is he what is going on here um I do agree with LeBron though that it seems like he doesn't care sometimes to about many people and about uh, everybody so I would say that. And sometimes I'm scared. And, but at the same time, sometimes I'm like, this is cool. You know, like, it's weird. Like, I'm all over the place with him. You know, and, and, on, and so it, I, but, but why would you, so I guess I roll my eyes at both of these, these groups. By the way, Laura Ingram just seems like a fuck, like a fucking bitch, by the way. Unfortunately, a lot of kids and some adults take these ignorant comments seriously take these ignorant comments seriously um well i think it's their opinion and i i don't mean how ignorant comments i mean i i suppose that you see here's the thing if i defend donald trump and say that i don't think he's racist then how in the world can i not defend lebron when when she calls him ignorant like what it's just his opinion. He may he may be wrong, you know. And, and listen, I don't. I know that they're influential to kids and stuff like that. But what what do you what is what do you want? Do you want to like go abduct LeBron James and like tie his mouth shut? I mean, what is what is the point here? I mean, I, I my segment might have been like, oh, LeBron James gives his opinion on uh, Donald Trump. Well, uh, LeBron James, why don't you just shut up and go dribble a ball? I don't care. You know, you could have, <laughs> maybe you could have said that, but I just don't get where the point is here. What's supposed to go on here? The, the, it's just really weird. Look, there might be a cautionary lesson in LeBron for kids. This is what happens when you attempt to leave high school a year early to join the NBA. And it's always unwise to seek political advice from someone who gets paid a hundred million dollars a year to bounce a ball. Oh, oh, and LeBron and Kevin, you're great players, but no one voted for you. Millions elected Trump to be their coach. So keep the political commentary to yourself, or as someone once said, shut up and dribble. I don't know. I, 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 don't, I don't get why there's such ferocious um, backlash to those comments by LeBron. Like, there has been some dumb shit said by celebrities. Like, celebrities who took out ad campaigns and gave these just crazy sort of incoherent, incorrect rants or anti-Trump 
uh, TV commercials where it's where I, I feel that those were mean spirited and just dumb. And I feel like you can say like, oh, you know, why don't you just keep your stupid celebrity mouth shut? Like like the people that I feel like that about are like the people that said they were going to move out of the country. And just just like Rush Limbaugh and anybody on the right who said they were going to move if Obama got elected. I'm still waiting for you to move, fuckheads. But um, I'm also waiting for people like Rosie O'Donnell to move and and uh, share. And everybody who said, oh, I'm going to leave the country if, if Trump gets elected. Well, you didn't leave the country. So those are the people. Every time those people open their mouths and try to give an opinion on something, I just go, um, you're full of shit. Why don't you shut the fuck up now? But LeBron, I don't think LeBron said he was leaving the country, so I don't really have a problem with LeBron giving his opinion because it's his opinion. I get what they're doing. They're sitting in a car. It's very influential, you know, kind of crap on Trump a little bit. But they're giving their opinions. If they think, if they feel this way, they feel this way. And honestly, and I don't, listen, you may be out there laughing at me, but if I was Donald Trump, I would invite LeBron to the White House. Like, invite him. Invite him with whoever he wants to bring. Bring fucking Puff Daddy. and Bring fucking Jay-Z and Beyonce and bring a whole bunch of other people. And, like, let's sort of talk. Like, I want you to fucking hit me with, you know, what are you mad about? Like, let's figure this out. You know what I mean? Or I'd send a message or a tweet. But, you know, Donald Trump's tweet's probably going to be like, go, bo- go bounce a ball, you fucking idiot, you know. Something like that gets paid a million dollars. Why don't you donate some of the money? Or I don't know. Who knows? Who knows what his comment? If he even messages anything about this, but you know, he'll tweet something stupid. But I know that deep down, if you really grind Trump, he does care. It's weird. If you really start hitting him, he seems to care. But I don't know. But who knows? He'll probably say something shitty. You know. I just know that if I was president, it would bother me. Especially if, like, let's say that Trump is not racist, right? I don't, I don't know if we have the right proof to say that, but let's say he, let's say he wasn't, right? Let's let's say he isn't. Like, he may not be. You know, depending on who you are listening to this podcast right now, you may think he is or is not. I don't know. You'll fight in the comments, I'm sure. But let's let's just, for instance, all agree that he's not racist, and somebody like like you know LeBron James and everybody they're sitting around a car, and they're saying. You know, that, um, you know, he's racist and dividing and not listening and stuff like that. Like myself, I would be like enraged trying to like get a hold of this guy. Like I want to speak to LeBron, you know. I want you to know that I'm not racist. You know, that would bother the shit out of me. If someone said thought that I was racist and was talking about it like like just casually like, oh, yeah, of course he's racist. And he doesn't. And I'm not going to have to become numb to his racism. You know, I would I would just be like, wow, like I'm not what the fuck? And I know some other some people out there would say, well, fuck them. Who cares? You know, but uh, it would bother me because I tend to. I'm just that way. That's how I am. But maybe he is. But but they feel that way. So that's the thing is like, forget what you think. You think he's not racist. You think he is racist. You think he's whatever the fuck. Um, They feel that way. And they're talking about that. I think what it is is some people think that it's bogus. You know what I mean? I think some people think what it is is like LeBron and them, they they don't really think he's racist. They're just saying that because they're racist and don't want a white guy as the president. But I don't know if that's true because I don't think, were they saying that same stuff when George Bush was president? You know, I'm not sure. I don't think so. Was LeBron James growing up like, I mean, Bush is racist? Maybe because Kanye West said it, <laughs> you know, years ago. He probably might have seen that on TV when he was eight or seven or whatever. And, you know, I don't know. I just thought this was weirdly mean-spirited. I, I really thought that everybody in this situation was a moron. I, I, I think that, like, LeBron and Kevin Durant, I think, like, their opinions on things for the most part are dumb. And I think Laura Ingram's comments on their opinions are dumb. And um, maybe you think my comments on both of these things are dumb now, too. I don't know. Look, there might be a cautionary lesson. There might be a cautionary lesson. Everyone has an opinion. That's the cautionary lesson. Must they run their mouths like that? Unfortunately, must they run their mouths like that? Like, must they run their mouths like that? Unfortunately, a lot of kids and some adults 
take these ignorant comments seriously. <laughs> take them seriously. Well, they were serious. I mean, that was just their opinion. Like, what? It's so weird, man. Like, we're not allowed to have. A, they're not allowed to have opinions because they're basketball players. They don't quite have the grammatical um, accuracy that you do, or whatever. I mean, fucking. But I just said, don't make any sense. But it's fucking five in the morning, folks. Come on. Anderson Cooper shreds Trump. He went to play golf while they held funerals. I thought um, Trump called off his golfing to go meet with everybody. I thought, I swear to God, that happened. Am I fucking crazy? I don't know. I, th I thought I was right. Um, I was looking for this uh, Egypt story because they like they found something out there. They found a bunch of shit out there, and it's just so whacked out because we're getting vague information. And I really want to know, but I don't know if we'll ever get to it. Uh, but guys, thank you for being here and supporting the Patreon. Patreon.com slash Joe Cronin Show. Thanks for dropping the five bucks. Uh, feel free to leave comments down below uh, on this Patreon uh, post. Or if you're hearing this on the free episode on uh, YouTube.com slash Corrupted Podcasts YouTube channel, which is YouTube's, uh, which is my Corrupted Entertainment channel on YouTube. I don't think I'd put this on Joe Cronin Show's YouTube. Uh, then feel free to leave some comments down below. What do you think about Laura Ingram? Do you think that she was over the line? Do you think LeBron James and them should shut their mouths? Do you think everybody's a moron? Or do you respect everyone's opinion? That's it. What do you think? I, I, I Again, I, I have sort of a double opinion. I, I have an opinion of, I think all these people's opinions don't matter to me whatsoever. I don't give a fuck what LeBron thinks. I don't give a fuck what Laura Ingram thinks. I'm going to think what I want to think. And I think they're all fucking people that I wouldn't listen to his opinion for the most part. But, you know, LeBron James and anybody else has an opinion to say whatever they want to say without being completely just, like, thrown thrown aside like shit. So I think that uh, Laura Ingram was kind of a cunt in her little piece here um, and plays the villain, despite the fact that I may not agree with anybody. I think she kind of uh, threw her villain hat on here, for sure. But maybe you love her. Maybe you think she was great. Maybe you thought she slayed it or something. I, I don't know. Maybe you did. Maybe, I don't know. Let me know below, you know, whatever the fuck. Maybe I'm wrong. I, I really don't 100% know exactly how I feel. But I just think she was a little mean-spirited there. And uh, LeBron Camp was a little clueless. But at the same time, I don't believe they were really clueless because that was their opinions. And they feel that way. And I'm not going to ignore somebody's feelings. Because I got feelings too, man. I don't know. All right, let's move on. New attacks on Fergie keep coming. Oh, boy. Fergie. And listen, I know there's some people out there like, damn, Joe, you really hate Fergie. I fucking hate Fergie. I have hated Fergie for a long time. I don't usually hate on people and shit on people. But when I see somebody who since day one has irritated the shit out of me, because I always thought this girl, other than being pretty and maybe nice and whatever, sucks at singing and this music sucks. Why the fuck is she so popular? And why is she, like, in the Black Eyed Peas, too? Like, why was she, like, the number one thing? Like, always seemingly she was, like, the thing at the forefront. Because I think she sucks. So, finally, finally, she gets crapped on. Needs auto-tune. And now J-Lo and Beyonce are getting sucked into the drama. And the hive is pissed. The bad blood began when Fergalicious walked up to the NBA All-Star Game Mike over the holiday weekend. Fergie. Her unique rendition of the national anthem started getting smirks from a celebrity audience in L.A., which included Jimmy Kimmel, Beyonce, Blue Ivy, Steph Curry, and LeBron James. They should have just called Beyonce up. They should have said, you know what? Can you shut up, Fergie? Let's get Beyonce up here. Can somebody get, get Beyonce up here, please. Please get Beyonce up here. After that note, you can actually hear the crowd laughing during the TNT telecast. Haters rip Fergie on social, and after the massive backlash, she released a statement to E! News. No, no, 
I'm a risk taker artistically, but clearly this rendition didn't strike the intended tone. The next day her ex Josh Jumel showed up to her house with a bunch of roses and an I love you card. We have a great relationship, we really do. His gesture is more evidence four-year-old Axel's parents are making it work. We are committed to that little boy. I will say that you got to give her some respect, though, for saying, um, you know, for, for fucking being like, hey, you know, I take risks. And that didn't work out. You know, she didn't say like, it's funny because they say that she strikes back and stuff. I don't see a strike back and I don't see everyone freaking out. Like, I, I don't, you know, E! News did a good job of overselling this bullshit because, hey, she fucking said like, yeah, it didn't work out, you know. So, you know, I, it happens. But I just fucking never liked her. And, like, I just don't get it. I don't get it, son. <laughs> fucking worst thing I've ever heard, though. Through the paralysis. Like, her fucking voice irritates the hell out of me. I don't know how she sold anything. I <laughs> do this is a guy I don't know who this basketball player is man but he got a look on his face like I want to kill myself right now he is fucking just his face is amazing his his face is amazing How did she think she was doing it? I mean, it's just really funny. Anyway, top 10 national anthem uh, fails of all time. For this list, we've chosen performances in which singers vocally hmm. destroyed the Star Spangled Banner. All right, well, let's see. Here we go. We got, uh, is Bruce Springsteen on here? He fuck up? To remember America's most famous song, Bolton took to the hand and... Oh, it's Michael Bolton. Damn, I thought it was Bruce Springsteen. Oh, God damn. Christina Aguilera was number seven on their list. That's nah, just bad. Moved on with bravery. Oh, yeah. I remember she messed up the words, right? <laughs> oh, man. Whoops. The Pittsburgh Steelers are like, we're going to lose. We're going to lose because of this. <laughs> oh, man. Who's this? Oh, this is a hockey game now. Uh, this is Watch Mojo's list. Uh, Alexis Normand, which is a looks like a Chicago Blackhawks game. I I don't remember this. I don't remember this game. I'll have to go listen to it later though. Roseanne made the made made the list, of course. The best is the thing about Roseanne though is like she knew she was doing a terrible job. Interpretation: The rushed to perform the national anthem at a 1990 Major League Baseball game and shocked the world with her brash intonations. Despite a lyrically sound... Like, I would take, like, Rah! like I would take Roseanne because at least, like, she knew. Like, she was like, yeah, this sucks. Sorry, this blows. I'm doing this right now and it sucks. And you're going to have to listen to it. <laughs> oh, man. I remember this one, this other hockey game one where the girl like barely could walk, like skate or walk, whatever. She could barely walk off the ice because she just blew it so bad. She just wanted to get out of there. You could tell she just wanted to get out of there. And they were all trying to just, you know, comfort her and shit. It was very nice of them. But <laughs> my God, man. Hey, there's been times I fucked up stuff. I fucked up. Uh, I mean, I was a singer, if you could call it that, when I was doing the metal band stuff. But, um,. You know, we, I remember I messed up our own, the song I wrote, you know what I mean? Like we hadn't, I don't know if we hadn't played it or if it was just, it sort of sound, all sounded the same to me at some point and I just forgot where I was. And I think I sang the f second chorus over again, or no, the verse, the first verse over again. And in the first verse, there was two extra lines. So it like fucked up everything kind of in a way. And the band even was like, what are we playing this again? Or are we playing the the second part? You know, so they played the second part, but 
there was supposed to be me screaming coming in with the chorus and because I was on the second verse they played the second verse the right amount of times so I, I was still singing the verse when they were hitting the chorus and then I couldn't catch up to the chorus and it fucked up everything and that was our own like a song that I should know because I, I made it <laughs> so I mean shit happens shit happens and people get hurt man people get fucking hurt uh, Black China apparently leaked or a, an oral sex tape leaked of Black China Black China says her sex tape may be dirty but she's clean <laughs> that's the fucking line on TMZ uh, the video shows China performing oral sex on a man fuck yeah la, la, la. was leaked Monday on Twitter her boyfriend or ex-boyfriend claims to be the man in the video sources close to China tell TMZ the scene was shot on her cell phone last July but it's just she showed it to absolutely no one we're told the phone was not stolen and there's no obvious evidence it was hacked no photos or videos from her phone have been leaked well then how the fuck did it get out other than the sex tape okay so it went into a tape format was it really a tape I mean is there tape anymore is somebody really putting this on a fucking VHS I don't think so um shot the video on China's porn he gave it back to her and never got a copy of the video well we're told uh, China will file a police report I don't know man it's bizarre Trey Song's being accused of striking a woman he was partying with uh, during NBA All-Star Weekend TMZ's learned oh shit look out Chris Brown it's on now Wendy Williams had just shaded the hell out of Beyonce and Jennifer Lopez. Damn. Oh, this is over the Fergie thing, I think. Oh, this is sort of all the fucking crazy hype they were getting into that they didn't get into in that last video. Don't worry, Fergie, you're in good company. What is this? Uh, she reacted to Fergie's Nightmare Anthem performance and apology. Wendy Williams is a fan of Fergie, who's also a friend of the show. She needs auto-tune, uh, said Wendy. <laughs> Jennifer Lopez needs auto-tune. Janet needs auto-tune. Beyonce needs auto-tune. Adele, Aretha, Celine Dion, Warwick, and Mariah, they need nothing. They sing raw dog, she says. Adele, Aretha, Celine Dion, and... Oh, oh, Celine. I think she means Celine Dion. And then Dion Warwick and Mariah. They need nothing. They sing raw dog. Um. Wow. That would piss off some fucking... No wonder they're all mad. I like Wendy Williams, though. I kind of dig her. You know? I find her to be fairly honest. Did she shit on Beyonce, though? Man. I would have... I would, God, you wish Beyonce would have got up there and just told Fergie to shut up. Hell, I would have grabbed any guy in the front row and made them sing the anthem. Probably been better. You know? Oh, say can you see... By the dawn's early light, what so proudly we hail. Like anything like that would have been better than fucking. <laughs> oh man, it's too bad that guy, the NBA player, didn't slap the fuck out of her instead of that other girl that was the accusing him of slapping him. Um, Friggy clarifies that Tarantino bite was simply a bit of fun. So she said something about Quentin Tarantino too. Um, all this shit's coming about Quentin Tarantino, who's apparently still going to be the one who maybe directs this new Star Trek movie, which is crazy because I think they're doing the old cat, like the regular cast, the Chris Pine cast, right? So this would be Star Trek. This would be the fourth movie of the rebooted sort of Star Trek alternate. Uh, for those who aren't familiar, the new Star Trek movies are... Not a reboot, but take place in an alternate timeline. So if that makes any sense to you, takes place in an alternate timeline does the new Star Trek movies with Chris Pine. So this would be the fourth movie with the Chris Pine cast. And um, apparently it's going to be an R, maybe. And it, I think Quentin Tarantino is going to direct it. That seems crazy. But the only thing I'm excited about is the dialogue will be better because, God, the dialogue has been not the greatest. And Star Trek always does better with, would do well with good dialogue. And Quentin Tarantino usually does a good job with that. It, uh, unless he's not even involved in that, 
it the writing may still not quite come from all from Quentin Tarantino so you know it could be just that he picks up the director's chair and that's about it and they sort of write an R movie I don't know I don't know what the situation is interesting though for Star Trek could be this is going to be either a fucking colossal failure or if Quentin Tarantino does direct the Star Trek movie it will either be a colossal failure or an unbelievable hit it will be like the one where you're like wow the other three movies were like all right but damn here we go you know or it's going to be like what the fuck was that this series is dead you know and I don't know how I feel about either one because I don't know. I'm never going to be happy. I just want TNG. I just want them to make more TNG. I want Netflix to be like, you know what? Let's go get the next generation cast and let's do a reunion show. But part of me doesn't want that either because the TV series ended so well. But there you go. I think we talked a lot. It's almost 6 a.m. where I am. And I got to get out of here because my kids will be up soon and I'll be dead. <laughs> I'll be dead asleep. I didn't sleep much last night because I was editing episodes of stuff and looking up news. And I ended up hitting a wall, essentially. I wasted a couple hours of time doing nothing. Um, not being able to really create a story or create a podcast that I wanted. So I wasted my time. But I'm going to be recording some podcasts tomorrow with some new faces, some new people. And we'll see how that goes. Also coming up soon will be my interview with um, a uh, an, an artist. Great, uh, pretty cool musician, very high fashion. And I think you guys might like him. He's pretty cool. And I won't say his name right now because I'll keep you in suspense. But you don't know who he is probably because he's kind of underground. But um, that interview will be up soon on the Corrupted channel. And I'm sure we'll advertise it on JCS. And uh, we'll have some fun. Guys, I can't thank you enough for being here and listening to everything I do over here and supporting the channel five bucks a month or more. If you're doing more than really, I mean, wow. Um, but yeah, shout out to everybody. I mean, and also to, uh, I mean, I don't know, man, you guys keep the show running. Everybody who's a wrestling fan, everybody who's into everything I talk about. Um, Carrie Bradford, thank you for becoming a $5 patron. Um, a tree root also pledged $10 a month. Thank you guys, the new patrons, and everybody who's been increasing their patronage. If anybody ever has a problem or issue or question that they want to talk to me about as far as Patreon or anything else, please make sure you message me here on Patreon and tell me before um, you know you get upset about it or tell me or not sure or whatever the hell. Just tell me about it, and we'll talk about it, and we'll figure it out. And uh, we're good to go. I'm out of here. I will see you guys tonight for out of nowhere, hopefully at 11 p.m. Eastern Time, U.S., what do you guys think about all the shit I talked about? Feel free to leave comments, uh, feedback, whatever the hell. Spread the word. Tell your family about the show. Um, send people this, you know, tell them. Send them podcasts. Send them links to stuff. Get them involved. Get them watching the show. And you, every single one of you guys, if you tell one friend, uh, we could have one other listener. So, you know, 300 of you guys tell one person. We got 600 people here. So it's, uh, it's pretty cool. People appreciate it too. Cause they like stuff to listen to. I do all the time. I love when people tell me about new stuff. I know sometimes when you tell people, they just go, Oh, whatever. Cause when you tell people stuff, you, you don't listen like, Oh, whatever, you know? Um, but, uh, I don't know. Usually I just send things to people like, Hey, uh, I know you like to listen to shit. So check this out if you're bored. And sometimes it works. You guys are the, uh, are the word on the street. So you guys are the ones that keep the show running. Everybody that donates live to the shows and everybody here that supports on Patreon to get this bonus content, um, but also uh, funds the show. Without you, we're fucked. So thank you. My name is Joe Cronin, and my three kids thank you. And Leah thanks you too. And uh, my dog even thanks you. Good night, everybody. We'll see you tomorrow for more Morning Madness. See you tonight for Out of Nowhere. <laughs>